Last time we talked about uh, pure pass-throughs, which are mortgage securities that just pass through all the cash flows to investors uh, proportionately to how the mortgages pay off. But uh, people discovered that they could divide up the cash flows. And one of the ways, uh, the first ways people uh, divided up, this is sort of Wall Street firms dividing up the cash flows, was into interest only and principal only securities, or IOs and POs. So let's go back to our first mortgage amortization spreadsheet, and I'll show you what an IO and a PO look like. The int an interest only means that the <coughs> investor receives the interest on the mortgage payments. So initially there's a lot of interest. If we had a 5% interest rate and a, this is a court event source, still an annual mortgage, not a monthly mortgage, but you, and it was a $90,000 mortgage initially, then 5% initially would be 4500 But remember that the initial payment also pays off some of the principal. And we have this. We have the $1,355 worth of principal paid off. Uh, so that the next period the principal is lower and because the principal is lower the interest uh, portion of the payment is lower. So what we're doing with the interest only and principal only is we're taking the mortgage payment and I'll just put it here, the mortgage payment and we're dividing it up into interest and principal and initially it's, most, it's more, much more interest than principal but over time, it ends up being more principal than interest. So the interest-only recipients' payments are front-loaded, uh, and the principal-only recipients' payments are back-loaded. But that's not all that's interesting about the interest-only and principal-only division. So the interest-only we notice that their payments tended to be front-loaded and theirs are back-loaded. So what this means is that the duration of the interest only is shorter, relatively short, and the duration of the principal only is long. And and duration you can actually measure technically as sort of the uh, <coughs> kind of the length of a bond that would correspond to these bonds. So um, if there's no, assuming no prepayment, and I'm going to drop that assumption in a second, assuming no prepayment the duration of a principal only uh, might be uh, sort of, let's, let's say if the duration of a regular mortgage were 10 years, that is it corresponded to a 10-year bond, so this is the whole mortgage, the interest only might be 5 years, principal only might be 20 years, that is that they, uh, um, the they might correspond. So, in effect, you've divided your mortgage cash flows into a shorter term and a longer term security. Okay, but assuming no prepayment uh, is really not what the IO and PO are about because, first of all, there really will be prepayments. And secondly, the prepayments will be correlated with interest rates. And that is actually uh, negatively correlated uh, with interest rates. That is, as interest rates go down, prepayment speeds up. So you have this negative correlation with interest rates. And what that means is that, uh, you know, with the thing about a prepayment is it hurts the IO, the holder of the IO security. 
Why? Because you're no longer getting interest payments. And if in some in many circumstances the prepayment may help the principal only because they're getting their money faster. In fact, in, in most circumstances it's going to help the, the holder of the principal only security. They're going to want to get their, their principal back faster. So if we were to look at the behavior of this, these securities as a function of interest rates. This is no change in interest rates. This is interest rates, let's say, going up 2%, going down 2%. Well, with a, a prin principal-only security, um, well, we, okay, with a, let's just do like a, a regular mortgage. You remember that um, its value is higher uh, if interest rates fall, but it doesn't cli doesn't climb forever because of the prepayment, the fact that people are going to prepay in a low interest rate environment. And then it kind of falls off pretty steadily in a low rate environment. So this is our current environment. Uh, in a high, sorry, in a high rate environment, the uh, value of the prince of the mortgage falls, and the low rate um, rises a bit. Well, in the case, so with a principal only, um, you get sort of more benefit in the low rate environment because you're getting uh, faster uh, payments. Uh, you take more of the hit in a high rate environment. And the interest only kind of gets the reverse. And, and uh, for uh, mortgages that are um, not too extreme relative to market interest rates that are reasonably close to market interest rates, an interest only security can actually have the property that its value goes up as interest rates go up. So this could be the IO and this one could be the PO. So the, in, the value of this interest only mortgage goes up could security could go up as interest rates go up. Why? Because the prepayments are going to slow down. Um, and that means that you'll be getting more interest payments because you, uh, the more prepayments you get, there are the fewer interest payments. So you actually may benefit from a slight rise in interest rates. That would be the case if, um, particularly the case, let's say, if the under, if the mortgage rate is let's say five percent and the market rate is about four and a half percent then a lot of people will be threatening to prepay but if, if all of a sudden the market rate goes to five and a half percent the prepayments will dwindle and so the interest only security benefits a lot from that so people on Wall Street were really trumpeting the benefits of of splitting up the mortgage securities this way. They were saying that well, there are some people who could benefit from the PO because they want to have long duration. They want to have things that act like long-term bonds. And there are people, conversely, who uh, want to hedge against <coughs> an increase in interest rates. That is, the rest of their portfolio is going to be hurt by an increase in interest rates. But if they can find the right kind of IO, they can get a, something that increases with interest rates. Um, I have to say that it's a very inefficient form of, uh, of hedging or speculating on interest rates because it all operates through pre the prepayment function. The prepayment function is, has a lot of uncertainty around it. If, if you uh, instead could would just hedge with uh, you know, interest rate futures and options on the futures and options market, that's probably going to be a more efficient hedge. Um, so I, I, I'm not really quite sure why the uh, creating these strips created value. Uh, one thing that I suspected and that you should worry about if you're in a regulatory position 
is that um, you know the, I think these these came out kind of in the late stages of the SNL crisis, and you can imagine a savings and loan. Uh, let's say somebody owns two savings and loans, uh, both of which are really kind of underwater. You could have one savings and loan invest heavily in IOs, and the other one invest heavily in POs. And then if interest rates move, uh, let's say they go up, your your IO savings and loan will uh, be in good shape. Your PO savings and loan will, of course, be a disaster, and then you give that—that's the one you give to the government and say, "Oh, we're bankrupt. Sorry, we need the um, this, the uh, deposit insurance to bail us out." So, um, so I guess my mor the moral of the story is that these kinds of derivative mortgage securities create opportunities for speculation. And as a regulator, you have to worry that any opportunity for speculation will end up being used to uh, create sort of more volatility and variance in, uh, in profits across banks, and more variance in prof profits across banks will lead to more costs for an insurance fund. I think that's all I'll say about these guys.